continue to be in the service and continue to guide us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are going to go ahead and get into our... Um, uh, oh, I forgot to change that in the bulletin. Here I thought I had the bulletin done and I forgot to change some things. <laughs> we do not have the call to worship or the poem and prayer right today. Um, I forgot to take those out. Uh, but we do have announcements. So announcements, June 17th at 6 o'clock, we will have our board meeting at the Parsonage. Um, and June 26th is the men's prayer breakfast at 8 a.m. at High V. And June 28th is the Women's Fellowship at 6 o'clock at the Parsonage. Um, and I didn't put this in the bulletin, and I just thought about this this morning after we had we printed the bulletins last night. But we will be partaking in the July 4th community service. Um, we There are two like short devotionals going to be given that day, and I will be giving one of those. And and they will be borrowing our keyboard as well. And so I'm so grateful that we had that keyboard so that we could help the community worship together. And so I just wanted to let you guys know that July 4th, we will be partaking in that. It's at 9 o'clock, and I forgot to look before I came um, to see where it is. So just kind of keep that on your radar that July 4th, we will be going to that community um, service as well. So those are the announcement we have tithes and offering we still have the the um offering plate at the door so we will go ahead and get back into worship and we are going to sing he has made me glad i will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart i will enter his courts with praise I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for He has made me glad. is going to be There is a Fountain. Show my sins. 
beautiful day that you've given to us and I just thank you once again that we get to come together and to learn more about you and to listen to your word and Lord I just pray that you be with our hearts and our minds and just continue to speak to us and continue to show us what it is that you want to do in our lives and how you want to guide us and Lord I pray for those who are here today and I pray for those who aren't here for whatever reason that you just continue to to be with them, continue to guide them. Lord, I pray we have so many, so many in need in our church right now. Lord, I just pray that you just continue to to comfort them. 
Lord, I think of Susan in the hospital still. Would you just be with her and guide the doctors and the nurses that are working with her? Continue to guide them in what it is that they need to do. And Lord, I just pray that you just continue to be with them, continue to show them whatever it is that they need to see. And Lord, I pray for Vera and this wound that she still has. Lord, that you just continue to, to help heal that. Continue to work with the doctors and the nurses to, to help that in healing. Lord, I pray that you just continue to guide her and help her with the, the pain that she has with that. Lord, I pray for Bev that you just continue to guide her. Just continue to, to be with her and her family right now in this time. Just continue to have your hand upon them and show them that you are right there with them going through all of this with them. Just continue to give comfort. Lord, I pray for those who are gone today that you just continue to keep them safe in their travels. Lord, I just pray that you have your hand upon them. Lord, I pray that you just continue to to guide us as a church. Just continue to, to show us what it is that you want to do because we don't want to take a step without you telling us how to do it, where to go. Lord, I just pray that you just continue to guide my words as well. Let them be all for me. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You got me. Am I going to squeal at all? <laughs> um, let's just pray for Mike real quick. Lord, I just pray, I just pray that you be with Mike as he's, they're pulling out of where they were, that you just continue to have your hand of protection upon them. Just keep them safe, Lord. We just pray that you just have your hand on all those guys that are coming out and pulling out. It's such a hard time as you're pulling away and bringing your troops out that there's so much going on and so much firing. And Lord, I just pray that you have your hand of protection upon all of them. We pray, Lord, for each and every one of them as you just continue to guide them, continue to be with their steps, continue to be with their mind and show them how to, to get out safely. Lord, I pray that you just continue to be with them and guide them. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And I should have looked at the back of my bulletin. Um, we are going to try this again today, this mic. So... Um, Adam says that I have to stay in my bubble, so we will, we will try. <laughs> oh, thank you guys for being so patient with all these technical things and, and the different mics and everything. And as we try to work, as we try to work through all these things, I do appreciate your patience because I know that it's not flawless and and you know what church service really is flawless but I do I do appreciate you know your guys's uh, patience on that as we work through some of these issues and some of these issues kind of pop up without us even thinking about them or when we've tried them at home it doesn't you know it works just fine and then we get here and it kind of pops up so I do appreciate that and I I do appreciate you Adam um, for working through those things I do um, today, yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, today we are in still First Corinthians, and we are going to be speaking. Love does not about love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. So, First um, Corinthians thirteen verse six. Um, but as we have in 
in the last couple weeks and as we will continue in the next couple weeks, we are going to start out with this exercise where we put our name in or our pronoun in the 1 Corinthians 13 verse, the love verse. Um, as I've said before, I did this exercise years ago and it was a real eye-opener for me. And I pray that as we go through these next couple weeks that, that um, we have in this, in this Love Like That sermon series, that we will begin to, ha- to allow God to change our hearts in a way that we start to love like he loves. And so as we say these, sometimes, you know, we kind of feel the weight of that, like when you have to say, Marcy is patient. Well, when I first did this exercise, I was not a patient person. And so to say... Marcy is patient. That felt to me kind of like a check from God. (laughs) You're saying this, and it's not true, and you know it, and that's one thing we need to work on together. And so I want us to say this real quick. It is, it'll be up on the screen. It's also on the back of your bulletin, um, right underneath the prayer request. And so um, I know you guys probably have this, but I will give an example just real quick. So I would say, Marcy is patient, Marcy is kind, she does not envy. Pretty simple. Okay, so let's go ahead and say this together. Marcy is patient, Marcy is kind, she does not envy, she does not boast, she is not proud. She does not dishonor others. She is not self-seeking. She is not easily angered. She keeps no record of wrongs. Marcy does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. She always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Amen. And as I said before, Paul was saying this to the church in Corinth, but I say that we shouldn't just have that kind of love with those within the church. We need to have those lo- that love for people with out- outside of these walls as well because of this verse in John. This, I, they will know we are Christians by our love. This verse in John that says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. As I said this week, we are speaking in 1 Corinthians 13, chapter 13, verse 6. This love does not delight with or in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And I want us to look at three words. And the reason why I say three words is because in translation, this verse actually says, love does not rejoice over the wrong, but rejoices with the truth. So we have the rejoice in there twice. And we, we translate it delight and then rejoice, but it's actually the same word for both of those So this first word we're going to look at is rejoice, which is this word, this Greek word, and it means to be glad, obviously. So the the root of this word is this. It is also the root of grace and of joy. And since they share the same root, they also share the same kind of core meaning. So it's a kind of happiness, that, that grace, joy, um, rejoice. So the next word I want us to look at is this evil or wrong, um, depending on your translation is what it's translated into. And it's this Greek word, and it means injustice or unrighteousness. Um, And then, of course, we have rejoices again in that verse. And then we have truth, which is this Greek word. And it simply just translates truth. Um, So, in, in figuring that all out, we could say that love does not celebrate unrighteousness or injustice. It celebrates truth, right? Um, We can also say that love does not rejoice over someone's unrighteousness. 
but celebrates when they are righteous. Uh, Or love does not gloat over someone's guilt. Or we should not celebrate someone's failure, right? The Message Bible puts it this way, and I loved it, so I wanted to, to show it to you guys. Love doesn't revel while others grovel. I wanted to share this word with you that I learned a few weeks ago in my intro to psychology class that I was taking. It's this word. (laughs) I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce it. It is actually German. And, huh? Schottenfreude? There you go, my German speaking husband. (laughs) Not really. I thought the only phrase in German that you knew was. Sprocken the English. <laughs> he was stuck in a German airport once trying to find which, <laughs> which place he was supposed to go. <laughs> um, anyway, it says pleasure derived by some, someone from another person's misfortune. So that means like when we get excited because someone else isn't doing that great, right? And there's a German word for that, and I was kind of surprised that I had to learn that, that there was a German word for that. Because in English, we don't have that word, but we still do that, don't we? We may not have a word for it, but we still, we still do it. Um, when I think about this word, uh, and I think about this verse, I kind of think about sports, I mean, sometimes when we're watching sports, we get a little excited when the other team does something boneheaded, right? Uh, (laughs) Or maybe like the races when an opponent's car crashes, we're kind of, yeah, right? Or how about the news? Sometimes when we see something on the news of some, like someone, some scandal involving someone that we don't like, we might go, I told you, they were a terrible person. And we kind of celebrate in that their misfortune. But the problem is, is that love doesn't really look like that, right? Um, Which reminds me, you know, this week going through this, it kind of reminded me of the story, and I'm going to tell on myself just a little bit. Um, It kind of reminded me of a few stories, but I'm going to tell you guys this one. When Adam and I first got married, we lived on the north side of Atumwa in this small little house that he had um, before we got married. And we could hear almost everything that went on outside. It was one of those kinds of houses where you could hear everything. And it was kind of this quiet little neighborhood. And we really enjoyed it. And we had our two girls. And then we had David, you know, and David didn't sleep at all. And he would scream, and so, of course, the whole neighborhood would hear that screaming as well. But we were very sleep-deprived at that point, and, and we had a neighbor, one neighbor on one side that had a dog, and he would have the dog outside, and that dog would bark all day long. All day. All day and all night. And it was terrible. And I was like, here I am sleep deprived. In the few seconds of sleep I could get, we had this dog barking. And it was terrible. But on the other side of us, we had neighbors that had teenage daughters. And one of those teenage daughters had a boyfriend. And he liked to come over to the house, and he liked to sit outside the house, and instead of honking his horn, I guess he thought he was doing us a service by just sitting there and revving the engine to his car, right? Oh, it just annoyed me so bad, and I was just like, oh, and I would just pray, Lord, just please help him be quiet, Oh, I was so upset. You know, we had the dog on one side, we had a screaming baby in our house, and we had the repping on the other side. And so I remember one day, I remember this, Adam doesn't, Adam says he doesn't remember this story, at least the last time I talked about it, he said he didn't remember this story. But I remember going to McDonald's one day, we went and got food, and as we were coming back, we see this 
car along the side of the road, and it looks like the front axle had just broken. The tire was, you know, it's supposed to go this way. It was going this way, right? And I was like, whoa, that's, you know, we all look, and who is it? It was the boyfriend. And I was sitting there going, yes, yes, I am so happy. (laughs) I know. That's not what love looks like. (laughs) Right? I was so happy. I was rejoicing in his trial. And it's something that we've all done, right? I mean, that car that revs up, and and we go, oh, I just wish it would be quiet. And then all of a sudden, it's broken, and we just kind of go, yes. I really felt vindicated. I felt like God was answering my prayers (laughs) for quietness. But looking back on that now, I go, oh, I was not very loving right then. I was not showing love in a very proper way. I didn't have grace for him. I just doled out some judgment for him and rejoiced in his trouble, in his failure. And I'm sure at times we've all celebrated or rejoiced in other people's failure, but But love doesn't do that, right? Love doesn't rejoice in someone's failure. Love actually grieves it. Our verse says that love does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And I would argue that the opposite of rejoicing would be mourning, right? So if we say love does not rejoice in evil, we can say that love grieves evil. Oh, when was the last time we properly grieved evil? Because I don't think that grieving evil is verbally attacking someone that's doing evil, right? I don't think that grieving evil um, attacks those that are doing wrong because we know that love is patient and love is kind, in a verbally attacking or physically attacking someone that's doing wrong, we in ourselves are kind of doing wrong, are we not? And not showing love. Um, to grieve is to lament. And back in, in this day, in the Bible day, to lament is to, to rip the clothes, put on sackcloth, and put ashes on their head, Right? So to love properly, we are grieved by evil and injustice, just like God is grieved by evil and injustice. We cannot rejoice in evil and in injustice. We are to rejoice in the truth. We cannot revel while someone else grovels. We can't rejoice when someone else suffers. Being a part of the human race, being part of God's creation, we are to rejoice, or we, we cannot, sorry, slip there, we cannot rejoice when another part of creation suffers. Right? We are all part of God's creation. Paul brings up when he bring, when he talks about how what love looks like as we live love out Paul brings up this he says we are to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn so Paul says in Romans this week I'm going to be reading a story of um, or a story that's out of the Bible of Jesus but it's in in John 8, and if you know anything about John 8, at first couple verses, um, they are not in the original transcripts. I felt like I would be um, doing wrong if I didn't mention that, but I want to show this story um, just because I think there's a few things that we can, we can take out of it. It's in the Bible that God give, gave to us. But there's a few things I want us to take out of this story. 
Again, I'm so sorry it's so warm in here. If I start dripping sweat, then sorry about that. <laughs> okay, we are going to read the first couple of verses of John 8. At dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman, a woman. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. And they kept, when they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left. With the woman still standing there, Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, he, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Now go and live your life, or leave your life of sin. There we go. So the Pharisees in this story were this word, this German word that I'm, again, not going to <laughs> try to pronounce. They were deriving pleasure from someone else's misfortune. They were deriving pleasure not only from this woman's misfortune, but they were trying to derive pleasure from Jesus' misfortune, right? They were trying to get him trapped into saying something. Jesus knew that this wasn't what love looked like, so he took no part in it. Jesus saw this woman, and he saw what was unrighteous about her. The Pharisees showed everyone what was unrighteous about her. But Jesus saw this woman as part of God's creation. And Jesus did not let this woman's unrighteousness become a source of rejoicing for the Pharisees. He instead gave grace his only statement towards her was that he didn't condemn her and to leave her life of sin. Did he quote Bible verses at her? <laughs> Did he point out what all was going wrong with her life and how he could help? He gave grace and love to her. The Pharisees were more concerned with the law, with the actions of righteousness, instead of the person. And Jesus was more concerned about the person. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus was not interested in, in the unrighteousness of her, but I am saying that instead of stoning to death, Jesus taught us a new way to deal with people, right? Jesus, in, um, in Matthew 5, uh, chapter 5, verses 43 through 48, he said, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? We've read through something similar to this last week, right? Are not even tax collectors doing that? And if you agree only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. And he ends by saying, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We are righteous when we love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. These things are linked 
Jesus doesn't just throw that one in at the end of his, you know, speech there. Those are all linked. They're not separate. To love those that persecute us and to pray for them is how to be perfect as our Father is perfect. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Truly, sincerely loving someone means that we can't revel even when our enemies grovel, right? Righteousness or holiness is not just following the rules. A holiness life includes love. And love is patient. And love is kind. And love does not envy or boast. And it is not proud. And it does not dishonor. And it's not self-seeking. And it's not easily angered, and it keeps no record of wrong. And love does not rejoice in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And love always protects, and always trusts, and always hopes, and always perseveres. And if we aren't growing in love this way, the way we are asked to do, then what kind of holiness do we have? Are we truly Loving the way that God has asked us to love. Another translation of this verse in 1 Corinthians says, It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Being righteous, being holy, is more about love. Wanting wholeness. For those within the world. We want justice for those in the world. We share the gospel of Jesus not just because, or not because we are told we need to, but because we so long for the entire world to be healed and to have the wholeness that we have, right? We want others to see God. Not because we are told to, but because we want that for them. Because we love them in such a way that we want that for them. That we want that for even the person that gets under our skin. As I said at the beginning, and I've said several times, we are to reflect Jesus. And Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted, right? Then we see that in Isaiah 61. To proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes an oil of joy instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. We are called to take part in the rebuilding of the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. To renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. We can't do any of these things if we are reveling while others are groveling. Now, I'm not saying that we can't rejoice, that we always have to go around in mourning. But what I am saying is in our heart attitude, our heart attitude needs to be such that even when our enemy is going through trouble, that we grieve that. We don't celebrate it. We share Christ because we want to help heal. We want God to heal anyone and everyone. Even those that don't look like us. Even those that don't believe like us. Even those that don't vote like us. Even those that don't look like us, act like us, right? We want healing for them so that they can be whole And we want them to be the best them that they can be, not 
because it benefits us, because love is not self-seeking, right? We want to reflect the image, and when we love the way that God asks us to love, then we will start to see healing on this earth. And I'm going to state something that might hurt, but get ready. Our judgment on the world has not brought forth a revival, right? The Pharisees' judgment on the world did not bring forth a revival. Jesus loving people brought forth a revival, right? So maybe our love, if we love the proper way, if they, we love, they will know we are Christians by our love, right? If we love the proper way, maybe then... And only then we'll start to see a revival of love here on this earth, right? Because as the end of our verse says, love never fails. Lastly, I want to share the scripture from 1 John for us to think about as we go through the rest of these lessons on love. 1 John verse or chapter 4 Verses um, 7 through 12 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has, has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. I want Adam to leave that last verse right up on the screen. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. If we love one another, a love that is true, a love that is sincere, if we do that and love one another, then God's love is made complete in us. If we love the way that Jesus loved, if we love others the way that God loves, amen. Our closing song for today is Your Love Compels Me. And I want us to just think about those words as we sing them, but before we sing them as well. But it says in that song, Your love compels me, Lord, to give as you would give, to speak as you would speak, to live as you would live, to see as you would see, to serve as you would serve, and to be as you, what you would be. That means we got to love, right? Love the way that God loves. I really pray that as we sing this song, that, that we really think about these words. Linda, will you come up and we'll, oh, you're fine. <laughs> we'll sing this together. We'll sing this and then we'll have a moment of prayer.
does compel us. That your love compels us to, to give as you would give. To speak as you would speak. To live as you would live. To see as you would see. To serve as you would serve. To be what you would be and to love the way you love us. Lord, I pray that you speak to our hearts and our minds and that if there's any part of us that needs to be changed, Lord, that you point it out and that we work with you and that we allow you to change it. Lord, I pray that we just love so well. We love so well that people will know we are Christians by our love. That we love so well, even our opposites and our irritants. Those that are opposite of us and believe differently than us. We love them so well. That people won't even realize that they are our opposites or our irritants. Lord, I pray that in our lives we... We live them so well to be reflections of you. I pray that you just continue to guide us, continue to show us what it is that, that needs to be done to live this holy life, to live a life of love the way that you would love. Lord, I just thank you for this church, and I, I pray that you just continue to guide us Continue to show us what it is that we need to do and what steps we need to take next, Lord. We don't want to take a step without you telling us to take a step. I pray that you just have your hand upon us and guide us still. Lord, I pray that you just continue to speak to us and continue to use us. I pray that you continue to mold and to make us as well. Lord, I pray that you just speak to our hearts. I pray as we leave here, we go out and we love on this community in a way that it's never been loved on before because we are showing your love. Lord, I, we just love you and we give you all the praise. We pray that you continue to be with us as we go from here and keep us safe. Be with us this week. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You guys are dismissed and you'll probably want to get out of